snuck in here to pace and we're going to take a look at paintings by Thomas Nuskowski. And uh, okay, so I'm sort of uh, <coughs> doing this surreptitiously, so I'm not going to yell too loud. So if you want to hear my comments, we can just put your ear next to the speaker. Uh, yeah, so this is maybe Thomas's first show in uh, a couple of years. And uh, he is a very influential and well-beloved painter here. I think these first four pieces are all works on paper. And, uh, well... It's kind of typically Thomas Nuskowski, so there's a whole lot of work in the show. We're not going to have time to get it to all of it. It is all entitled, and I'll just uh, kind of slide along and give you some uh, comments, maybe take some close looks at a couple of pieces. Uh, most of these works are small. There's a couple of works on paper, looks like uh, color pencil and ink. And uh, the rest of the paintings are about this size. And I would say that's probably about uh, maybe 24 by 30 inches, something like that. And uh, the paintings are linen on wood panels. Now, Thomas has been uh, painting in the New York scene for I don't know what, maybe 40 years, and uh, at some point, I think, maybe back in the late 60s, early 70s, he switched over and spent years painting on small canvas boards. So everything was something like 16 by 20 inches. And uh, that was his way of kind of negating the whole idea of the giant abstract expressionist and the monumental scale and the the whole macho, big, tough painting thing. And uh, over that, I don't know what, next 20 years of time, he just developed his own vocabulary and slowly but surely he's kind of expanded his scale a little bit. Now all of these pieces are untitled. And uh, well, this one almost looks like it has text floating around the edges. One of the reasons that people like, love Thomas's work is that um, he's got kind of a basic vocabulary of things that he uses, but he spends a lot of time making sure that he never repeats himself and he's constantly inventing new applications of his, his little motifs and sort of chopping things up remixing them, doing different things with color. Well, that's kind, of, so that's kind of a study for this piece. This is a large work on paper. It's probably gouache or acrylic on paper. Now, I think Thomas has influenced a lot of people, especially people that work in a smaller scale like Andrew Musello and uh, even James Siena, who's got a show next door. This is another work on paper. Oh, I walked in and this one really caught my eye. This is a good example of the way that Thomas would construct a composition. He's got his kind of ground of one particular design and then he chops up something else and sort of has another contrasting layer of design and uh, well, he's a great colorist. This is a work on paper. It's like watercolor and uh, maybe acrylic ink. Well, I just came back from a 
preview at the Whitney Museum and the exhibition they have, I think it's America Hard to See or something like that. But they bring out all of their great uh, early American modernists. So they've got the George O'Keefe and the Arthur Doves and early Stuart Davis and artists like that. And uh, I can see where Thomas is kind of doing work that relates to that. You know, these paintings are oil, and he's got a wonderful uh, touch with the oil, and that's something that only happens after uh, many years. Now, this is a great example of another one of his things. You've got your basic field, kind of a grid, and then he breaks it up intentionally with this kind of jagged, juicy colored line at the bottom. There's a couple of smaller pieces. Oh gosh, that looks like fluorescent pink or fluorescent red. I think the other thing that I like is that some of these compositions look incredibly simple until you stop and look at them and see the subtle little things he's got happening here, like these slightly lighter blue bubbles floating behind there. You know, he's also someone that uh, he knows what he's doing and uh, he doesn't get overly finicky with the uh, paint handling, so in this case he's kind of done a uh, thin wash over this back area, but he doesn't get uh, precious with that, he just leaves it. And here again we get to see that kind of uh, directness with the brush strokes there. This is work on paper. Oh, this one also caught my eye. It's very juicy. It's almost made me think of a Jonathan Lasker. But, uh, well, you can see that there's a lot of overpainting in here, maybe even going back in and scraping things out and painting over the top of them. And, uh, yeah, I like that juicy palette. I'm gonna keep running. It's another interesting approach, and uh, he's got this kind of a little series of three or four pieces where he's kind of riffing on the same idea. This is a, an acrylic on paper. A beautiful drawing. Again, this almost makes me think of text. A-E-T. Oh, I thought this was funny. This kind of has the sense of uh, some kind of pixelated images, but uh, <laughs> somehow it gets mushed, mushed back down with the painter's hand. It's just straight graphite. You know, here is this very simple kind of browns and earth tones, uh, grayed out blue, and a couple of shots of uh, red, yellow, and green, but uh, oh, that is nice. We'll just run down the rest of the wall here. I like this one too, and uh, again, kind of little variations. He's got the, the background network with the light blue stripes. And you kind of come into this oval section and he kind of darkens out the color. And 
at some point he flattens out the blues gives the line a little different uh, quality well oh now this is really unusual this actually reads as a figure almost like a little man sort of falling down there So, this is James Combe, Thomas Nuskowski, recent paintings, Rick Pace, 510 West 25th Street in Chelsea, and thank you, Kate. I come from a long line of sinners like me. Well, what's your name? Colin. Colin. Yes. Thanks, Colin. Thank you very much, sir.